Hello and welcome, I'm Ken Gowdy, and in this tutorial I shall show you how I clean my saxophone. Now I clean my saxophone for two reasons. The first reason is I don't have to spend money if I don't have to. Now if I don't clean it, I know for sure these pads are going to rot. I'm going to have to take them in to a service person who's going to charge me to replace these pads. Money which I don't have, money which I could probably use to buy an expensive mouthpiece or something else. The second reason why I clean my saxophone is when I play it, I don't want to hear sticky keys. Every time you release these keys, you hear that sticky sound. It doesn't happen so much on this saxophone, but on my previous saxophone, on the majority of the keys, when I would release the keys, I would hear that sticky sound. It was becoming very annoying. So I clean my saxophone to save me some money and to keep my saxophone in top notch condition. So let me tell you what you're going to need to clean your saxophone and how to go about cleaning your saxophone, including cleaning the reeds and cleaning the mouthpiece. So stay tuned. When you play the saxophone, the muscles of your diaphragm will force warm air out of your lungs, up into your throat and mouth. When it reaches your mouth, you'll pick up any loose particles, such as food particles and saliva, and carry these contaminants into the saxophone. Now, when this warm air carrying these particles makes contact, with the cooler temperatures inside of the saxophone, it will cause condensation. This is the same as when you breathe on a mirror and see it mist up with moisture. So when you play your saxophone, it causes a build up of moisture, mainly in the mouthpiece and neck. So you want to clean out this condensation as much as possible by cleaning your saxophone after every time you use it. Otherwise, eventually it will lead to problems in your saxophone. So when I clean my saxophone, the first thing that I clean is the reed. So in order to do that, I take off the neck. I take off the neck because I'm in the practice of taking off or putting the mouthpiece onto the neck when the neck is detached from the saxophone. I don't want to damage the neck and that's the reason why I do that. So take off the mouthpiece, put down the neck and get to the reed. I want to clean the reed first because if I leave the reed around while I clean other parts of the uh, saxophone, I might forget about it and damage it. Since this is the fragile part of the saxophone, I want to clean this first. So the way I'm going to do that is just get a piece of cloth. I'm going to wipe off the saliva and condensation. Then I'm going to take the reed and put it back into its case. And then store it away. And that's ready for next time playing. However, if you really consider what you've actually done, you've actually taken a reed, you've actually wiped off the saliva and condensation, you've taken this damp reed and placed it into its plastic container. Now this becomes the perfect breeding ground for mold and fungus. And so at some point you want to give it a thorough clean. You don't want to have to take your reed, put it back into your mouth when it has fungal growth or mold on it. So at least once a week, you want to give it a thorough clean. I'm going to show you how to do that. There are various ways to clean your reeds. I usually use mouthwash or hydrogen peroxide. Let me know how you clean your reeds in the comments below. When cleaning your reeds with hydrogen peroxide, always read the warning labels as you would when using any chemicals. Different manufacturers will have different warning labels on how to use their products, so always follow their instructions. You want a low percentage, 3% or less. Food grade means that it's safe to use on food. To clean your reeds, pour the hydrogen peroxide into a tall container and gently place the reeds in it so that the part which goes in your mouth goes into the liquid. The reeds will float, so bear this in mind. Small bubbles will appear to show that it's working. Leave the reeds there until the bubbles stop, which will be about half an hour. When completed, throw away the liquid and soak the reeds in clean water for a time. Then rinse the reeds in clean water several times to remove the taste of the peroxide. To finish, dry the reeds and place them in the containers. You should also consider cleaning the reed containers when you clean the reeds. To know that you cleaned your reeds, the next thing to do is clean your ligature and mouthpiece. Now the ligature is probably the cleanest part on the saxophone. So all that it needs is just a wipe to get rid of finger marks to keep it nice and good looking. So just get a cloth and just wipe off the finger prints and that will be okay. Your mouthpiece, what you're going to need is a pull through, which is basically a piece of cloth with a string attached to it and a weighted end. You get your mouthpiece and the hole in the mouthpiece, which actually goes onto the neck, that is where you're actually going to push your pull through. 
So if this is a mouthpiece and this is a neck and this is how it connects, this is where the pull through goes through. Never the other end. So this end, take the weighted end of the pull through, drop it through and then just pull it through. Drop the weighted end in and put it through. When I clean my mouthpiece, I usually maybe do it about three or four times. It's really quick and basically what you're doing, the cloth is actually wiping out the condensation that's formed inside of the mouthpiece. Then get the cloth and just wipe the outside of the mouthpiece and make sure that there's no buildup of saliva on it or calcium or any other junk from your mouth that's on the, uh, the mouthpiece. Clean it and then this is done. However, what you basically done, just like with the reed, it's just all that you've done is just wiped off the saliva of the mouthpiece. And so again, uh, bacterial growth can actually develop on the mouthpiece. And so at some point you want to give it a thorough clean, just like with the reeds, you want to give it a thorough clean. So maybe when you clean the reeds, also clean the mouthpiece at the same time. To clean your mouthpiece, and I'm using an ebonite mouthpiece here, wet it inside and out with cold water. Make sure it's cold water, since hot water can cause discoloration to occur on the mouthpiece and can warp it out of shape, destroying your sound. Next, wet a soft cloth and put some mild soap on it. The milder, the better. Now, rub the soap gently on the mouthpiece inside and out. When cleaning the mouthpiece with the soap, make sure that you are very gentle when cleaning the baffle. This is the baffle, this part which is inside of the mouthpiece. And also be very careful when cleaning the facing. This part here is the facing, the part which the reed will vibrate against. So be very careful cleaning the facing be very careful when cleaning the baffle. Make sure you get all the soap inside of the mouthpiece. And on the outside, if you do have a buildup of calcium or lime on the baffle, then use a soft toothbrush and clean the baffle. If the, if the uh, lime or calcium buildup is not coming off, then you can always dip the toothbrush in white vinegar. So dip the toothbrush in white vinegar and then clean it. That should do the trick. Once you've done that, rinse off the mouthpiece with cold water. Get rid of all of the soap. And then dry it with your pull through and this mouthpiece will be clean enough to use next time. So the next thing to clean is the neck. Now as you know the neck has two holes, a big one and a small one. Take the weighted end of the pull through and drop it through the big hole. It should just go straight through down through the other end and then what you do just pull it straight through and again what you're doing is wiping out all the condensation that has uh, built up inside of the neck do it a few times when i'm cleaning my neck i would actually do it three or four times just to make sure that all of the moisture all of the uh, condensation inside of it has been wiped out don't want any traces left obviously if you're short of time short of time do it less I usually do it maybe three or four times. Once you've done that, take the cloth, just wipe the outside of the neck. And the neck is done. So the next part to clean is the main body of the saxophone. And what you're going to use for that, again, is another pull through. This is bigger than the other pull through that you use for the, uh, the mouthpiece and the neck. Basically, it's a, again, piece of cloth with bit of string and on the other side a weighted end. Now this is probably going to be the most difficult to clean because it is so bulky and heavy. Pick it up, hold it from the bell. The bell is the uh, 
the, the, the most sturdy part of the saxophone. You hold it there, you're not going to damage the saxophone. I usually rest it on my knee to give it extra support and I usually hold it here as well away from any of the moving parts. So I'm holding the saxophone securely with my left hand because I'm right handed. It's on my knee, it's not going to go anywhere. I get my pull through cloth. I take the weighted end and I drop it down the bell. It always has to go down this side of the saxophone. Drop it down the bell. Then I drop the cloth in as well. Now, the only thing with this, because there are lots of keys and lots of holes, the weighted end may actually um, hit some of these holes and actually stay inside of the saxophone and you don't see it coming out the end. If that is the case, then just pull it out again and drop it back in again. It may be unfortunate that it comes out of one of these holes, but that's, that's, that's very rare. And obviously you have to be very careful just to get it back into the saxophone. So be very careful when you do this, then just hold it, turn it upside down and hopefully, yeah, the string has come out the other side of the saxophone. Now turn it back up the right way around and then just pull the pull through through. Now I'm holding it here on these parts. I'm being very careful of the moving parts of the saxophone. It's very easy to hold it and uh, damage some of these parts. So you have to be very careful when you're doing this. So again, drop the weighted end down the bell, drop the cloth in there turn it upside down hopefully the string will come out the other side turn the saxophone back up again and then just pull the pull through out and that's actually cleaning out all of the moisture out of the saxophone once you've done that i would usually do it maybe two or three times and now this saxophone is clean ready for your practice next time there are some other things I do to my cleaning routine. After I've cleaned the uh, inside of the saxophone, got out, gotten out all of the condensation inside of the saxophone, then I will start working on the outside of the saxophone. So I get a piece of soft cloth and I'll clean the outside of the saxophone, especially where the lacquer is. Your fingerprints um, on the lacquer will begin to wear away the lacquer over time. So to protect the lacquer, give it a nice clean with the... Uh, soft cloth be gentle of course when cleaning the outside of the saxophone you don't want to bend any keys uh, i would actually clean the the pearls where my fingers are have been clean uh, some parts of the metal keys the guards but mainly the lacquered part of the saxophone and the inside of the bell Again, be very careful where you hold the saxophone. So now you clean the saxophone inside and out and uh, you use the pull through, but there's still condensation in there, especially around the, uh, the pads because we haven't actually cleaned that part where the pads are. And if you were to take a piece of cloth and if you were to open up one of the keys and stick the piece of cloth underneath the key, you will see a ring of condensation where the, um, the condensation is still there. And obviously we'd want to get that out because that's the, what's going to actually damage the pads. So what you can do and what some people do is to open up the keys, stick the, a piece of cloth underneath it, close the key, open it and take it out. That will get rid of some of the moisture on these particular pads. And you can go through the individual keys one by one. Usually what I do is the keys at the top because that's where the moisture is. So the few keys at the top, put the, um, the palm keys, I would open them up and stick the cloth underneath it, close it then open it again. That would take out some of the moisture out of those keys. Um, I will do the, uh, the G sharp, which usually is one of those keys that usually sticks and obviously the keys down here, which usually sticks, I would do that. But um, there is a product which can be used to actually help with it. There's various products. Um, you've got these things, which are called pad savers. And um, if you research online comments about it, then you're gonna have various views about using these. 
some musicians use them some don't um, but basically it's not for cleaning your saxophone after you've cleaned your saxophone with your pull throughs etc then this is supposed to take out the um, the condensation which is left especially around the um, around the keys because all of these uh, hairs will then extend out to where the pad is and then soak all of that condensation out from where the pad is so basically what you do you take the uh, pad saver and you'll drop it in like that also got one for the bell which will go in there you also get one which you can actually put into the neck and that's to get rid of any excess moisture that's in there the only other thing with this is that if you put this into your saxophone and it's actually soaking up all of this uh, condensation that's left in there and you actually leave it in your saxophone then you're actually leaving that condensation into leaving it in your saxophone which is basically defeating the purpose so what some people will do is after they've cleaned their saxophone with the pull through then they'll put the pad savers in there leave it for a time maybe half an hour or so and then that's going to take all of that excess moisture and once that time is done take it out and then leave your saxophone to air dry so leave it on the stand and allow it just to dry naturally so you've cleaned it with a pull through you've taken out some of the moisture with the pad savers and now you're leaving it for some time for it to dry naturally before you actually put it away in your case so quite a lot to do depending on the time that you've got uh, would depend on um, how much of this you would actually do